with you in the coming months, and work being the key word because there's so much to do. There are few higher honors than being elected by your neighbors. For them to have enough faith and trust in you to represent them and their interests and be the person they're counting on to work on the issues that are most important to them and our communities. And there's no greater responsibility than working every day to understand how to solve the problems we face as a state. For those newly elected, like I was 18 years ago, you may still think everything is black or white, yes or no, but I would warn you, there's a lot of gray in between. Typically, there are no easy answers, no corners to cut, only hard work ahead to do all we can do to create a stronger, more vibrant future for all of us. In electing a governor of one party and a legislature by another, the message Vermonters have sent to us tonight is clear. Work together. Vermonters are saying they want us to work for them, not against each other. They are saying we need to listen to one another and prove to the rest of the nation that in Vermont we can and will rise above partisan politics. We must come together for the future of our state in order to strengthen our economy, make Vermont more affordable, and protect the most vulnerable in all 251 communities across the state. Whether you're from Brighton or Brandon, Albany or, or, or Alberg, we all want the same thing. We want the kids in every community to get a great education, learn a trade, pursue the career of their dreams, buy a home, start a family, and retire right here in this state. This is the challenge we face together. And tonight, I humbly accept that challenge once again. I also want to thank my opponent, Christine Hallquist, for stepping up and running an energized and historic campaign. While we may not have agreed on many issues, we did agree from the start that this race would be about things we felt mattered to most of the people of Vermont. While across the nation, other races and other states turned negative and uncivil, in Vermont, we rose above it. The news out of Vermont this election was clear. We can disagree, we can debate, and we can do it with passion, but in this state, we can do it respectfully. It wasn't perfect, and at times we were reminded that we're not immune to the hate and bigotry that are all, are all too present across the country. But by and large, the campaign was marked by the type of civility Vermonters and Americans, for that matter, deserve in the public process. There was probably no better example of this than Zach Mayo and Lucy Rogers of Cambridge, two candidates ending a debate last month by sitting together to perform a musical duet. For this and for stepping up and putting yourself out there, I'd like to thank all the candidates tonight, win or lose. From the top of the ticket all the way down, it's not easy to put yourself out there. So I thank you for your contribution to the conversation and commitment to making Vermont a better place. I'd also like to note that the issues that have been raised in the campaign due to Christine's historic candidacy are front and center. I want to, you to know uh, that as long as I'm governor, I'll continue to make sure our state, our state lives up to our motto of freedom and unity, as well as our reputation of tolerance and compassion by being the most welcoming state in the nation while defending all Vermonters from hate and bigotry this will remain one of my administration's top priorities, no exceptions. Today, Vermonters spoke loud and clear. So tonight, 
I'll reaffirm my commitment to the three principles on which my administration bases every decision that we make on a daily basis. First of all, we must continue to make Vermont more affordable. I travel the state every day. I see the struggles our neighbors face, and I know that the high costs of living and doing business, energy, healthcare, education, and taxes are forcing too many to look elsewhere for opportunity. We should all find that unacceptable. So as I've done for the last 18 years, I'll spend the next two working to reverse these trends. Second, if we're going to grow our economy, we must bring it into the, we must bring the workforce in and we must attract more people in order to do that. We need more kids in our schools, more workers for our businesses, more proud first-time home homeowners right here in Vermont. We need a bigger labor force to support the public investments that we care about. Because if we don't, if we can't grow our economy, then we're faced with two options, raise taxes or make cuts to programs which could harm the most vulnerable, neither of which is acceptable. That's why I asked legislators, in fact, all elected officials, to work with me on a plan to grow our workforce, to increase our working age population, because our future literally depends on it. Third, we're going to protect our neighbors. We'll continue to address, address our opioid crisis, those suffering from mental health issues, and find ways to make sure all Vermonters have access to affordable health care. We'll take care of the elderly, and our veterans who have given us so much, our children and those who need us most, when they need us most, because it's what we do in Vermont. And finally, if we're going to accomplish any of this, we must continue to rise above the partisanship and politics of hate and division. Our time to make a difference for those who have elected us is far too short. We can't allow ourselves to fall victim to pettiness political games, and angry rhetoric. Now more than ever, we must be better role models because our children are watching and they want to be just like us. We must be better, kinder, and more respectful to each other and take time to listen. This is the challenge ahead. This is my vision for our future. It is the greatest honor of my life to have the trust of Vermonters to carry out this work on their behalf. So I thank you again from the bottom of my heart, and as I've done throughout my entire life, I will do my very best not to let you down. So thank you very much for having me here tonight.